So guys, welcome this morning. Thanks for giving me your, uh, your Sundays. I'm sure this will be very informative and very useful moving forward. So basically, we're into our presentation now. I've delivered this a couple of times in the past. Um, but it's basically nutrition 101. So everything that you need to understand about you know, how to track your calories, understand what calories are, the macronutrients, what's important, what's not important. And just give you some tips, some useful tips on the way, on how to uh, implement it into your lifestyle as well. So this is what we're going to be learning today. All right. Uh, first things first, we'll get into that. That basically just talks about food quality. Uh, then after that, we'll talk about calories and energy balance. What you need to understand and take away from that is how many calories that you burn on a daily basis. And understand the fact that what you put in equals what you put out. All right. So we're going to understand the balance for whatever our goal is. We'll get into the macronutrients, what's important there. Okay, people are saying don't eat carbs, people are saying don't eat fats, people are saying, you know, try this and that, meal timings, intermittent fasting. What's important for that goes? We'll get into that. Then we'll move on to meal timings and frequency. This will sort of place with what lifestyles are. What is possible for you? Is it two meals per day or is it six meals per day? You know, we've got to sort of understand the difference here and how we can use our allowance and currency of calories to split it across those meals. Tracking and measuring, this goes on to my fitness pal. Everyone know what my fitness pal is? We talk about it a lot actually. It's one of the best um, apps that people use to help monitor what calorie it takes. So we're going to teach you a few tips on how to use that. And then we'll talk about modern lifestyle and the other goal, which is what is my saying struggles in the restaurant, uh, what type of things we should eat, and what we should be mindful of. Going through a lot. So first things first, we're talking about calories, it's not just about calories. Okay, what's important is about food quality and the food choices that we make. Okay, because you know, a hundred calories or a thousand calories of donuts or cinnamons is a lot different from a thousand calories of oats or you know, uh, potatoes or rice or chicken or beef. Yeah, so we've got different qualities and also different portion qualities in there as well. So, the main thing that we want to focus on really and understand is what whole foods are. So everything that we eat and consume, ideally, we want to be whole foods. Okay, these one ingredient foods, they've got no hidden sort of hidden agendas in them. Okay, we know exactly what they are, they're not modified, they're natural, contain all the natural vitamins and minerals as well. Uh, high levels of fiber, generally less in calories. So this way you'll see uh, when you go on track and when you spot and you eat pretty clean, it's actually quite difficult to hit a 1600 calorie target. Right, because you realize, oh god, I've got to a lot of calories from food. Uh, well, compared to our processed foods, many ingredients, most of them we don't understand or know, but they're to uh, you know, build the shelf life of that product so it lasts longer. Uh, they're not great for our body, they cause inflammation. Uh, you know, covered in marketing, usually, they want you to just say oh, low in sugar, low in fat, but really it's been processed and have those qualities. Uh, highly addictive, higher calories generally, and really low in satiety, but highly palatable. So I feel like I might have ate that much, but that piece of cinnamon or whatever was 500 calories, so, and it didn't fill them up. It made you want more, it made you crave more. So we've got to reduce these things to stop having that craving to sugar and uh, you know, processed foods. Have we got any examples of whole foods? Maybe I said a few. Uh, Shout outs. Eggs, avocado, one ingredient food, there's no trick question. Yeah, almonds, nuts, meat, uh, potatoes, rice, everything. That's what I mean. It is what it is. You see the ingredients in the, uh, the food labels? Uh, peanut butter is a great one for an example. You get peanut butter different quality. One second. Exactly, so here's the example. So peanut butter, you look at a food label, you get like a cheaper product, and you look on the back and it's like 85% peanuts, and then 15% of, you know, different oils, palm oil, different like sort of additives to it. Whereas really with a peanut butter, you just want 100% peanuts, right? Because that's all that you need, all right? So some of them will say 100% peanuts, they're the better ones, they're the good ones. Some of them are like the, uh, you know, the kid ones with extra sugars and additives and oil and it. it's all spreadable. We want to avoid those types. So that's an example of that. This is uh, another example of like an 1800 calorie diet. 
depends on what you could eat. Okay, so this is a great uh, image that I put out. 1800 calories of McDonald's, we call that McDonald's burger, I think. Fries, Coke, the lot, back flurry on the side. 1800 calories for that meal. We would demolish that meal quite comfortably. I would anyway, quite comfortably. And then two or three hours later, I'll be like, oh, I feel like I can do that again. I feel hungry again. And it's mad. 1800 calories. What you could have, you could have yourself an omelet in the morning for breakfast, you could have some uh, and, uh, vegetables for lunch, and then you could have these little. Uh, I'm going to call them um, special sausages with uh, some, some carbs or vegetables or rice. And then, of course, you can still have like, some snacks. So, we've got like fruit, yogurt, um, blueberries, we've got cookies, we've got diet coke, we've got like a uh, twister, ice cream. You know, you can start to pick these things in once you're eating a lot more food. Okay? There's a thing called the 18 uh, percent 20 percent rule. Won't get into that today, but the last few interesting. Okay, so that's an example of like the quality and the volume of food that you can have if you have mainly whole foods compared to processed foods. Okay, but these are also quick calorie swaps. Be mindful of like what you're having. So I could say mint bean, you've got a low calorie target. I would potentially ask you to opt for low fat mint bean because it's less in calories than normal fat mint bean. Yeah. So we just say generally mint bean is good, but it has to fit in your calorie target. So these are sort of swaps that you can have, like a lot of like, cheeses, you know, uh, there's a energy of ice cream, 1200 calories, but you can opt for something different, which is like a halo top, which is, I mean, it's not ideal, it's not processed, but be mindful of like swapping and substituting some of these things that we really love. We can still have that sort of balanced diet. Actually, this covers a lot, it's 80%, 20% growth. By that, I mean 80% of your food should be whole foods, 20% can be a little bit more to process, okay? and that's how we live a more flexible lifestyle. But initially, when we're into this, I don't really like that as an advice or tip because we've got to be super strict with the start because we've got to get rid of these bad habits, right? So it's an habitual development, okay? The other thing about poor nutrition that we need to understand is poor quality nutrition. That makes us sick. We've got bad digestion, we get bloating, we've got gut health problems, we feel fatigued and tired. This is why it's not just about fat loss or weight loss, we're looking great in the mirror, right? It's about how it makes you feel on a daily basis. Does it provide you with the right energy? Does it make you feel sick? Um, some, some people I know find that every month they're sick, like an the kids, it's this. No, it's not. It's your diet. You know, it's, it's, it's something in your diet that is causing you to increasing your, um, your uh, immunity to life. Right? So a lot of these things can be fixed by just changing our diet and improving the quality of the food that we eat. This is the other thing why I don't really like restaurants and stuff, or even meal plan delivery services. There's a couple of good ones, okay, they'll cost you. All right, but some of the cheaper ones, the more affordable ones, they're not mine and their margin, they're using the cheaper quality produce. They're using the sick chickens, you know, they're using the sick beef, they're using like, you know, um, really bad quality foods, all right? So, um, these sort of foods going into your diet are going to cause you some of these inflammatory responses, uh, tiredness, sickness, headaches, it's all related to your nutrition. And as soon as you get that, you'll understand, okay? And they say the vitamin and the mineral density of the qualities of the foods that are different to the other thing. One chicken compared to another chicken. So, part two, going on to calories and energy balance. What we need to understand is that calories are a unit of energy. Okay, it's calories in through food and drink, calories out through energy that we expend. So it's a, it's a balance, it's an energy equation. What we need to understand is basically that calories coming in with food and drink. You gaining weight is a factor that you have consumed too many calories compared to what you're burning out. Okay? The problem is we don't understand completely what we are burning out, so we're going to sort of educate you now. Roughly how many calories you would probably burn in a day, and then roughly how many calories you could burn during a training session, for example, for an hour, or walking and the effect of that. All right? So, calories don't come in through thin air, the air we breathe, it's only food we drink, so actually it's 100% within our hands and control, which is a great thing, right? comes with a lot of discipline though, and that's why we have to think deeper about what our goals are from this. So if our goal is to lose weight, this is what calorie deficit means. 
two million less calories than your bread. So close that. Okay? Everyone's had a calorie deficit. That's all people talk about. It's not true. It's not an answer against it. Being in that calorie deficit is how you will lose your weight. Okay? So, take for example, you say, I mean, you drop like 2.6 2. kilos over the past two or three weeks. You've been in a calorie deficit of some sort over that scale of time. Some days might have been higher, some days might have been lower, but on average, to get that weight loss, you've been on that calorie deficit. You might not have understood how many calories is your maintenance line that you're trying to stay under. Maybe we'll go to that, yeah. Maintenance calories is maintaining that maintenance number, so calories in, max, or calories out. And then you have your surplus. You've heard this, this is someone like me who really fights to try and keep his weight on. I eat a higher amount of calories than my baseline, okay? But it's hard to consistency. I don't understand this is. But what's important, okay? The top of daily energy expenditure, okay? This is how many calories that you burn throughout the day. A few key things that you need to understand is our best thing that's not great. This is the amount of calories that our body will burn. Just doing nothing, sitting there doing nothing. Our bodily functions will burn this amount. So say, for example, if we're burning a baseline of 1,700 calories per day, your rest of the metabolic rate would be over 50% if you're Oh yeah, that 50% should be lower. It's about 55%. Okay? You look at the margin of that. So our resting metabolic rate produces 55% uh, of our calorie burn throughout the day. Which means the therma effective of meals, not too important to worry about, is about 10%. So you consume and digest the food like proteins and the fat, actually require your body to use energy. So if you were sitting there doing nothing all day, that's what the weight is training, and if you have your meals, you still get a bit of a bear as well compared to the food. Now we start adding in some movement. Just walking here today, you know, brushing your teeth, combing your hair, um, all this activity that we do, uh, using the keyboard, is our needs. So non-exercise activity in Genesis. This is the all the movement tasks that we do. Now we can increase this more by taking more steps outside, walking more, being more active in general. The next one at the top was our exercise. So about 10 to 15 percent of the calories we burn in exercise, be it three to 600 calories, calories per hour. That's going to be about 10 percent or 15 percent. Okay. Your needs is something that we can really control. Okay. So doing more steps is going to help you burn more calories. I always say about a target of about 10,000 per day to initially start this off. But it depends on your lifestyle as well. So just being a little bit better than your back. Because the more activity we push in, it means that we can have more calories when the food that we consume as well. So we don't need to feel like we're constantly on a diet of low calories, 1,200 calories per day, because we've got the options of actually being more active. You know, we're training in the gym four times per week. We're getting our steps in, we're being more active on the weekend generally. That means that we can have a better like, quality of life with our nutrition and diet. It means like, instead of having 1,200 calories per day, it's a week they have, we can have like 14, 16, 18 calories. I'm talking more to the girls than the one outside. So how do you understand your baseline? I won't bore you with equations. Um, but there's easy ways now. Just go with online. You can just type in baseline calorie calculator. And this thing you can type in the rate, this is me, my height, 177, my weight, 78. And boom, it gives you your basal metabolic rate. Okay, so that's your uh, resting the metabolic rate. Me doing nothing for the day, I will burn 1700 calories. Give it take 10%. Yeah? If we're active, then it can, uh, accounts for that as well. So my activity level, say, I'm exercising to three times a week, it suggests that I have about 2400 calories set. Okay. So if I'm an active person, I should be having about 2400 calories a day to maintain my weight. Okay? There's another equation here. Uh, the basic estimate I used to use in dead, dead simple, dead quick. I'll take your weight in pounds and multiply it by either 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It gives us a rough estimate of our calorie expenditure for the day. So I base that off someone's level of body fat and activity. So if someone's like a, a higher percentage of body fat and not, like, and not very active, I've got 11 multiplier. If they're a little bit active, but a high percentage of body fat, I've got 12 multiplier. They have a little medium, moderate body fat and active. I don't even myself at 14, highly active, 2,000 calories is a baseline. Okay? 
So here's a typical example of, uh, of myself. Okay, so 78 kilos. Generally active three times per that week. Maintenance value is 2,400 as we just spoke. Now to drop and lose weight in body fat, we want to take that number on maintenance calorie and minus 10, 20% of it. Okay, so now that is my new weight loss target for calories. It comes to between 1,900 and 2,200. So for me, if I want to drop body fat and lose weight, I would use that figure between there. Okay, it doesn't have to be an exact number. I like this ratio, I like this boundary, right? It's a lot more efficient and easy to do. Right? Maybe it's a bit in it. It all comes to gain weight, I would go 5 to 10% higher. The reason we go higher on that is because we want to minimize the amount of fat storage as well. If I decided to have 20% extra calories, I'd probably a lot that would go towards fat. I'd want to try and gain lean mass. So we do it slowly instead of slowly is more is better than faster. Because even with that explosive 20% of calorie deficit, that might get you to your goal in eight weeks, but it's going to be very aggressive. It means it's going to be harder to keep that weight off, uh, and you know, the slightest slip wouldn't actually work. So you've got to spend time and jet there slowly, decrease the calories as opposed to just one big hit, half of my calories, say, for example. So that's what you need to understand there. It's like you take about 10 to 20 percent off your maintenance calories, so that'll be your fat loss goal, but you can gain weight, and about 5 to 10. Yes. So general, it's a lot. Not if you're active and exercising and you're doing well. I think it's, I think, what do you think there's, there's not a lot of what's good targets? Um, 800 and 800 calories a day. But we just understood that. Yeah, well, we got to think about metabolism a little bit. If we're used to eating very low calories throughout the day, there's two things that might happen here. One is that you can have such a low calorie target for so long that your metabolism isn't functioning as well. So you're actually like not burning as many calories as you used to, which is why it's harder to maintain weight. And then what we're going to do when we maintain our weight again is our body adapts to what we consume. That's why we need to constantly change the conditions. Drop more calories when we when I'm happy, go down to 700, go down to 600, which we might go down. What we've got to do is kind of slowly increase those calories again. Um, and so you might go to like 1,000 calories, stay at that for a couple of weeks, then you go to 1,200 calories, then that just so your body can adapt and start getting better. The other thing is, once you learn how to track effectively, you might understand that maybe you think you're eating 1,800 calories, but you're actually eating a lot more because you're not um, strictly monitoring the amount of calories that you're weighing out. So, for example, a piece of chicken, you look at it and it says 200 calories. Is that right? Maybe, maybe not. Um, I don't think anyone would function with that. You probably function, but you wouldn't have any energy, you wouldn't have any energy to train, you'd probably hate training. Your life. <laughs> it's not okay, so the best way to uh, you know, have a good quality of life is to actually try and pick our calories up a little bit and eat as much as we can and exercise as much as we can so we can have a good quality of life and a good uh, calorie target. Macros, what's important? Do we understand what macros are? Let's just shout them out. It's three. Not a trick question. Yes? Yeah? That's okay. There's a bonus one as well, alcohol, that's on its own, we won't touch into that. Uh, can anyone look at this dish and uh, link, tell me what the protein is on that plate? Egg. It's an egg. 
Are we seeing any roughly? Yeah, I guess. But uh, no, no, keep uh, three. The meat, the ham, that's protein. Any cups? Kale is high protein. Okay, so some vegetables do have a high quality protein, but to match the stick, like the meat, you'd have to eat a lot of volume of kale to match that amount. That's 20 grams of protein. So 20 grams of protein from kale might be like that much. There's 20 grams of protein from like chicken. This one needs to be sent as well. It's gray foods, obviously. Where's the carbs on this? Strawberries. Broccoli, I'd say that's more carb focused. Added fibrous carbs, we want these in there. And then the fats, we've got the zeroids, we've got the olive oil, oil, oil uh, the seeds around the plate. This is a great image, actually. I'm going to grab myself a pan of that. There are macros. So, what are macronutrients? Protein, carbs, and fats, as we touched on. Protein and carbs are four calories per gram. So, if I say to you, you can have 150 grams of Protein, that equates to 600 calories alone. Okay, so 150 grams of protein, 600 calories. Same with carbs, 150 grams of carbs is 600 calories. So that means if I just had carbs and protein, 150, 150, that's 1,200 calories. Now fats are a little bit different, they're nine calories per gram. So if I said to you, uh, you're having 100 grams of fats, that would be 900 calories. So if that was your macros, 150 grams of carbs, 150 grams of protein, 100 grams of fat. Your total calories would be 2,100, 2,100 calories for the day. Right? This is where macros come in. Okay, it's important to understand the distribution of what's important. Protein is very important. Okay, you won't find many meal plans or you know nutrition scientists who say don't eat protein, just eat carbs and fats. Right? Protein is the baseline for everybody, and everybody should have their protein target. The protein target I'm going to say to you now is about 2.2 grams per kilo of body weight. Okay? I like to go a little bit higher with that because more protein is going to be better at bend more, you build more muscle, you get leaner, and you feel satisfied for longer. Okay? Protein is all that. Also, the building blocks of the human body, okay? they help repair, recover, help a lot of the functions, and they're essential. Okay? They're essentially, you amino acids that our body needs. Vegetarian diets or um, you know, yeah, vegetarian diets in general. Pizza, that's not pizza diet. Uh, vegetarian diets that really struggle with some of these processes, really struggle to get out protein, not adequate protein. It's not impossible, but it's very difficult. Are you a vegetarian? No? It's much more difficult. Okay, so if anyone's watching the vegetarian, it's, you can do it, but it's, uh, it's more difficult. Carbohydrates, body's preferred source of energy, a high source of fiber, which our body needs as well for our gut health and digestion. Uh, stored as fuel in the muscles and liver is glycogen. People think, oh no, carbohydrates can be stored as fat. Only if you overeat, the same with anything. If you overeat protein, overeat fat, overeat calories in general, yes, the extra calories are going to be stored as body fat if you don't use them. But carbohydrates generally are going to be stored in the muscles and liver as glycogen. Right, so when we go for a run or an exercise, we're ready. That's our main fuel. So carbohydrates are actually really important to suggest that everybody consumes carbs on half the diet. 30, 30 to 40 percent, 30 to 40 percent of your calories spread should be carbohydrates. Okay. And some people might go, might go low carb for a little while, they might go higher carb for a little while. It doesn't really matter too much what I think carbs should be a part of the diet. I'm not going to be like a big and say I think mostly fats and protein, or mostly carbs and protein. I'm into that balanced diet, and I think that's where everybody should learn first before they go into the more aggressive um, keto diet, for example, or whatever. Fats, very important as well, but this one like a balanced diet because they are super crucial for brain function, cardiovascular health, heart. It's a source of energy as well, so if we didn't get, uh, if we wasn't having any carbohydrates, we just used fats and protein, we would um, create energy from these fats, okay? And these are jelly diets, where you have less than 10% of your daily calories from carbohydrates. They're essential fatty acids that we need, that we can't, our body can't create, so we need to consume them through our diet. These are all omega 3s in the ALA, EPA, and DHA. I'm not going to try and 
state of words. I read here on a note. But uh, all you need to know is that they're the, they're the sort of letters that you'll find on like the supplements thing at the level of EHA and EPA. Um, the most important ones for your omega 3s are the EPA and the EHA, and you want them at a ratio of about 4 to 1. These are coming from like things like oily fish uh, and seafood mainly. Okay, you can get a few certain vegetables as well, but we mostly through um, seafood. Okay, so if you don't eat good quality salmon, or likes of seafood, you need to probably supplement this because it's essential for your body to get an omega 3 Okay, for our energy levels and everything else on that. If we're not like, functioning well in the throat, or we have cardiovascular problems, or we need to get into omega 3 because they really help. EPA, uh, ALA, sorry, is actually found in uh, seed oils and things that we do over the consumer quite naturally, quite a lot. They're from nuts and seeds and these types of stuff. So you get them quite in abundance. So that's not really the concern. The main concern is the EHA and your EPA. Now, the reason that I really suggest that you supplement omega 3s is because even if you do eat a lot of fish and salmon, how good a quality is that? Is it getting the right mineral and vitamin density in there? Is it getting the right quality of omega 3s? Because generally, farmed salmon, for example, it's not good enough quality and you don't get good quality of omega 3s. I think that's it. supplementation. And when you're looking for that supplement, you're looking at a 4 to 1 ratio of DHA to EPA. Alright? Now these are all the macronutrients. Yeah? This is my food list. You'll find this in all of our fitness guides that I give you as a client. Okay? What you want to look at in yellow is the proteins. Okay? Now, I suggest there's three different types of protein. Alright? Protein fats. That's because these types of foods contain high levels of protein, but also high levels of fats as well. Beef, lamb, pork, chicken thighs, oily fish like salmon, uh, mackerel, sardines, whole eggs. These are proteins and fats, which is super important to know because these are going to be higher in calories because of the fat levels. We also need to understand that when we start tracking these foods, that's going to hit our fat targets as well. Okay? Lean proteins are generally mostly protein. So, chicken, egg whites, low fat meats, beef, uh, would be quite lean protein actually. Uh, whey protein, shellfish, white fish, or white stuff. Yeah? They're going to be there. So that's basically, it's just protein. Like 20 grams of chicken, or 200 grams of chicken is basically just 30 grams of protein. There's no fats and no carbs in it. So chicken is a good choice if you just want to get your protein type. Vegetarian friendly, all nuts, no butters, seeds, soy products, vegan protein powder, which is very important if you're vegetarian. Um, you need to get a protein supplement because our targets are going to be higher if we're more active and we want to build muscle and have a lean and healthy life. You need to get like a vegan protein powder. I'm talking to the camera for some numbers of Alright, hemp, pea, rice, spirulina, production to beans and lentils as well. There's a little asterisk mix to that because although beans and lentils are a quick protein, they aren't very high in protein. So you have to eat a lot, which means your calories are going to go up and you're going to eat a lot of carbs. Okay, beans and lentils are crap. Starches and grains, potatoes, rice, yam, pumpkins, uh, oats. These are all the food choices I suggest that you pick and use. Okay, fruits, they're the fruits that I suggest. Uh, other things, raw honey, acacia honey, dates. These are also very good quality sources of carbohydrates. You notice there's no like pizzas on there, donuts, sweets, sugar. We don't want this. We have natural sugar. Fruits, and we have starches and grits. Okay, that's what we have. Fats, you get most of the majority of your fats if you're a meat eater through your red meat and oily fish. So you won't need to top it up too much, but you might like to top it up with like maybe a, a quarter or a half an avocado. Uh, olive oils, maybe you cook it with uh, olive oil or avocado oil, essential oils, maybe cook for its quarters. Um, and the vegetables, yeah, obviously. It's nice, right? MCT oil is, um, again, that's a good quality oil that you can take as a supplement, okay? It contains a lot of meat and greens as well. Yeah. So if people like MCT oil, um, it's great for energy. Actually, the MCT oil is uh, suggested mainly for people who are on a diet. We 
because uh, it's a very good event that gives you a lot of energy. Yeah. So, so there's good counterparts and there's bad counterparts. <laughs> My favorite. Okay, so what do you need to understand? It's very complex. Okay, understanding how your targets and what your goal is there, lose weight, maintain weight, or gain weight. What's your target? What's your market? Next thing is hit that calorie target to attain that goal. Are you in a calorie deficit? Are you in a calorie surplus? Next thing is hit your protein target 2.2. So that's the first thing that you need to be monitoring as well after the calories. So let's put it this way: if you were to just monitor your calories, you would see a great result. Yeah, and not. If you want to see a better result, you would get monitoring your protein. Yeah, make sure I'm my protein target. I would see a better result. Actually, times two better results. Yeah, don't quote me on that. Then, if you want to get a little bit better results than that, consume your carbohydrates around your workout. So your body's actually using that to fuel and replace uh, the glycogen loss in the muscle so you can actually build muscle and get a new energy drop. And everything else, really, the remaining calories that you have can be split between carbs and fats. That's a balanced diet. Kilos. 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 Yeah, so always a little tip there, always just weigh your foods on top. Awesome. Yeah. So that's the way to do it. So I have like a 157 grams of protein. Yes, if you have three meals per day. Yeah, I have three meals per day. That's quite a lot. That's quite a lot. Yeah, so you might want to split that between four meals, or three meals in a stack. And we'll get a meal frequency next, so you get to understand like, how we're going to split this calories. Uh, also, 2.2 is on the high side. If I was to suggest to you, I would probably say start on dates, right? So, yeah, between 1.8 and 2.2, you know, you've got to find what works for you, right? Based on the goal, you can actually Yeah, exactly. So that first target that we aim for is protein, and then everything else can just get filled with carbs and fats. Yeah. Right. To be honest, we don't even need to worry about this because my fitness part is not Right? So we'll go into my fitness pal shortly. Uh, our protein target is from some body weight. Fat target, 1 to 1.5 grams per kilo body weight is a good target. And then the remaining estimates of the calories will just be carbohydrates. Okay, we won't do the math. I've got a board here to do it, but my fitness pal is going to do it for us. Yeah, we're in the 21st century. We've made it. Okay. Right, so meal timings and meal frequency. This is the next chapter. Super important. Lifestyle matters. Okay. We're not all athletes, we don't all get paid to eat and be in great shape, right? We've got to match this amount of things. So the main point of this one is I just want to understand like, how many meals you should eat in a day and what's right and what's There is no wrong answer, so your calorie target can be split in any way that you like. But it does become easier when you split it between multiple meals, right? Because you're not just going to have 16 calories on one meal, unless you have that McDonald's, because you'll be, you'll be hungry again, eh? You've got to space it out, right? Especially if you're in a calorie deficit, you will be hungry and you want to space this food out into the city. So I'd like to split it out to cost like two to four meals. Okay? So here's an example. Uh, if you had 16 calorie targets, this is how you would use your calories as currency. Okay? So it's like you're going to split that between the two meals that I'm having and a snack. You do that at the top. Meal one, lunch, because if you're having two meals per day, I suggest that you're probably skipping breakfast. Right? If you have lunch instead, 600 calories. Dinner is some calories, and at some point through the day you'll have a snack of about 400 calories. That means that we will hit our The same applies for someone who has three meals in a day. Then yeah, their meals are going to be smaller and more spread out. It's simple, right? It's not it's not sad. But Yeah, that's that's a little that's just a little uh, People just like to put these boundaries in because it's easier for them to control the diet that way. So 
for someone like that might say to you, like, don't eat any meals or don't eat after 6 p.m. and don't eat before 12 a.m. Don't eat intermittent fasting. Uh, just set boundaries to make it stricter. Um, so just eat the meal. Yeah. Yeah, just eat the meal when you want. Yeah. Ideally, yeah, two hours before bed might be a good time, actually, because it might affect your sleep if you digest the food. But it's not from a perspective of fat loss. You can eat the meal right before you go to sleep and then still lose the same amount. Resistance, I'm not going to suggest that you probably give it carbohydrates and yeah. and just like build up on the leafy greens and proteins and fats, and then slowly reduce them in a small quantity as your range and sensitivity increases. But that's a whole different chapter, right? That's okay, but we can talk about that. 2,400 calorie target, guys, for example, we might need to have more calories and wise down 1,000 calories per meal. Yeah? For someone like me, maybe I have 3,200 calories. Each of my meals, I do have about 800 to 900 calories. Three meals per day, and that's a protein drink, protein shake, about 400. Right? So we've got to space it out. Generally, I really like just three meals and a snack or a shake. It works really well, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And a shake or a uh, snack, a truce. Shakes are cool. Yeah. Shakes are easy. Um, that's what we've been doing today. So we have 700 calories per meal. Yeah, it's a large meal. Yeah, you've got to hit that, right? Don't worry too much. You've got your targets. You need what you want. Feel like that. My greatest pal. This is the one. Okay, so has anyone used my greatest pal before? Great, most of us. If you haven't, I just write it in the notes. It's definitely download it and have a play with it. The first thing that you're going to get in this book to do is set your weight goal. So you can set your weight in there. Your current weight and your goal weight, how fast do you want to achieve that goal? You want to lose like 1.5 kilograms every week or less. 1.2 might be a better suggestion because it's more, the slower it takes, the longer it takes, the more it's going to stick. Yeah? You could go to losing a kilo a week if you want, but that's not going to be very sustainable. And also, we're going to come back on a second and stop this from sustainable diet. Right? So, I'll tell you what. Get yeah, activity level. Like I said, it does it for you, so. It's a fair equation, we'll just search for it. It gives you these numbers. Okay, I've made a very specific today's lecture on that 2400. It's, it's based around here. Yeah. It's 2400 calories. It also gives our ratios of a macro ratio. I suggest that everybody start around 30, 30, 40. That's a balanced diet. It's 40 percent carbohydrates, 30 percent protein, 30 percent fats. You can play around with it a little bit to make sure that that number of protein matches your protein targets. Personally. So, say for example, if we had 1,600 calories for that, your protein target was 150, right? Just adjust that percentage to get your protein right first. Then you can toggle the uh, fats and carbs to balance down the way that you want to eat. More fats, you want more carbs, it's up to you. So, remember the rules calories first, we've got our targets. Then our protein target is most important. Make sure that number matches. And then carbs are back down the way. And then it gives you there, you can start to learn the track. So, when you're on this, very simple. The longer you do it for, the more consistent you do it for, the easier it gets. Okay? All the same common foods that you eat are stored in the library. The quantity of that food is all stored in the library. So it becomes as simple as at the end of the day, you just go, okay, breakfast, what did I have? Oh, that again, that again, that again, that again. Done. Lunch, what did I have? That again, that again, that again. You might only have like one or two variables in your day. This is what I suggest. Okay? Especially as you're learning nutrition. Standing it. Don't have too many variables. Okay? Make it very consistent. Eat the same things every day. Maybe just change the protein choice or change the carb choice. But it's the same format of meals. Right? So, uh, it might be for like ordering the same things in a restaurant as well. So, not consistency, right? Can you just lay a sample? Hey, 
grams of kind of olive oil, olive oil and a half a tablespoon because that oil I used to cook with. Okay, I'm not saying it's the best oil to cook with, that's just what I used. All right, half a tablespoon and it's way down to so 60 calories, which is half a tablespoon. If we're like a chef, things with Harry like that, come in. Yeah. yeah, like two, three, four tablespoons coming out, 400 calories going in that meal. Right, you consume it. It soaks into the skin, the food, the chicken, the potatoes. So, one little tip on that is get this spray oil, because you can actually monitor it as like less than half a tablespoon. Yeah. It's hard to do half a tablespoon of oil from the thing, because it falls out so fast with the spray of like. <laughs> Yeah, okay. When you super spray, again, yeah, you can do that. Sure. Yeah, you're just trying to do half a tablespoon like that. I mean, <laughs> like that, right? All of this stuff you get used to and you understand. Uh, as you do it, so you start to learn more about nutrition, how much things weigh, how much, well, I'm looking at something. Oh, that chicken breast weighs the moment. 50 grams because I know because I've weighed it in the past and that looks exactly the same. Yeah, we learned as humans. So it's very simple and easy to do it, right? What makes it super hard to do if you have different foods every single day? If you run into like the, uh, the coffee shop and you just like you can have that croissant and that sandwich, or you run into um, Waitrose at the deli and you're like, oh, I think I'll have some of that today and a bit of that and a bit of that. It's impossible to track your food calories, right? Because you can eat so you're satisfied with like food, right? So you just have a better eyeline, mind holds. Actually, this time, I don't actually take my time to learn. Okay, okay, 170 grams of protein, 91 grams of fat, and 229 grams of carbs for a total of about 2,400 calories, right? This wasn't by mistake. <laughs> I made it match, right? By changing the food quantities, the portion sizes, uh, Changing the chicken from 200 grams to 225 grams. Uh, you know, changing the eggs from two to three eggs to increase my proteins and then balancing it. It's a bit of a juggle, it's a bit of a game. But fortunately for you guys who are working with me, you have template plans. You follow the template plans and then you make it your own. Yeah? On the lifestyle, eat on the go. Because we've got about three minutes left, I'm going to shoot through this and we'll get to the QA. But on the lifestyle on the go, eating on the go, here's some tips. Okay. Avoid the obvious bad calls. Right? It's pretty obvious what a bad call is. You go to an Italian restaurant, what are you going to eat on that you want to diet? Uh, maybe pizzas, pastas, salads. It'll have to be a salad. Right? That's it. That's my punishment. I can choose this stupid place to eat on my diet. Right? So you just got to be aware of that. You might choose to go to like uh, an Arabic restaurant, great, that's better because they do like lots of grilled meats and vegetables. That would be my suggestion go to there rather than get to something like, I don't know, stuff like potatoes or something. How, much, how many potatoes have in the world? Where they cook in deep fried oil, where they cook like this way, it's different, right? So just try and be mindful of it. Choose zero calorie drinks, it's a waste of calories. If I have any sugary drinks, it's all not juices. Don't bother, it's a waste. If you've got 1600 calories, you don't want to waste 200 of those calories for a juice or a coke or a fizzy drink, yeah? <laughs> or a glass of milk. But you know, 200 calories from 1600, it's going to be about, what is that, 20%? Give it a second, 20%. He's saying it's not the addition, it's vitamins and antioxidants. You get your vitamins from fruits and, um, and vegetables, and the day you feel more satisfied to get more fiber and more fruits as opposed to the juice. Before you ask a question, carry up what part of what's with you all the time? Sometimes food cravings might come in and you're walking around on the road, you feel you're hungry, you're outside of Starbucks, you're like, oh, I'm hungry, I better eat now. Sometimes you're just thirsty, you just need to have some water. It might give you that extra 30 minutes that you need to find a better option to get home when I'm from. Okay? Because I understand that you get Carry soups and snacks with you. These are stories that you find in the clubs, protein shake, protein bars are really good. They're going to be processed, they're going to probably suggest that you can have like a protein bar because it's so convenient, like it's, that actually will really help you as opposed to having like a donut, right? Oh, I'm not looking at you then, by the way, I'm just looking through you. I just noticed we caught, we caught eyes there for a bit. I don't see. 
Also, I've got some text that I've read at the table. This is people's like, mindset who really struggle with like cravings. If it's there, I'm going to eat it. Right? Just say, no, bread, take it away, please. And then it's outside. Yeah. Ask the dressings and sauces on the side. You can hide it yourself. Rather than just go and sell it. Cheesecake factory that's all drizzled over it. Get it on the side. They're more than happy to do that. And then you can use bar for that oil and uh, dressing that you need. Sometimes it needs. Choose a side of grilled vegetables and put a salad instead of potatoes or chips or whatever. Uh, look at the menu beforehand. Okay. Also, if you're using delivery, we can get these calorie control options. So there's a category that says calorie counted. Click on that. All the restaurants that can track the calories can tell you, okay, it's a five hundred calorie meal with 30 grams of protein. So, that's it. We ran through it. What did you think? Uh, so, uh, guys, if you've got any questions about what we talked about, Let's hit the floor now. Thank you guys so much. If you're interested to learn more about nutrition, you can register and sign up for the project. We do training, nutrition, and a community of people, all like-minded, all focused on the same goal and task, and we work together to get a result. If you're interested, head to the project dhb.com, uh, and we'll speak to you there. Take care.